Today I wake to the news that Gary Wright has passed away. Gary was a founding member of Spooky Tooth. He wrote much of their most commercially successful album, Spooky Two, uh, and he also had two major hits in 1975 uh, off his album, The Dream Weaver. This was one of the first albums in pop music that had nothing but synthesizers and drums on it. Uh, I mean, you might be looking at groups like Tangerine Dream and Kraftwerk to try to find something similar. This is long before Thomas Dolby or the Human League or any of the 80s acts that came out that generally use synthesizers more than anything else. Well, this was 1975. He's notable for the fact that he was kind of a keyboard pioneer. Dreamweaver's roots actually goes back to George Harrison in India. Uh, Gary had gone to visit him while he was there and uh, came out with that song. So I thought it'd be fun to take a look at uh, Gary Wright in action live back in the day. So we're going to start with Love is Alive. That stringy keyboard is called the Arp String Ensemble. I used to have one of those back in the early 80s. It's also prominent on Dreamweaver and on Elton John hits in the day. That's a keytar. the analog synthesizer era. That's why you've got so many knobs there. Some vintage keyboards, let me tell you. Interesting they're having a fade out on this song. They were probably playing along to the track, the recorded track. But let's take a look at Dream Weaver. This one I'll be able to tell you for sure if it's the recorded track. Just take a look at the keyboards in these, you know, keyboard bass band in 1975 going on Midnight Special. I 
can't just close my eyes again Climbed aboard the dream with the train Drive and take away my worries of today And leave tomorrow behind Who dreams This is a live performance, fully live. I can see Wayne in Wayne's World freaking out over Tia Carrera right now. Nice harmonies. So that top keyboard is a string ensemble. I also saw B3 Hammond and Fender Rhodes. Fly me away to the bright side of the moon. And a con. Meet me on the other side. And definitely a sense bass. Sense. Mm. Very nice. So, okay. Um, he could play live, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, I think at some point I started missing guitars towards the end of that. But uh, in general, you got to call him a pioneer. I mean, having no guitar player up there in what's really kind of a rock band from a guy that was in a hard rock band. Uh, a few years earlier. Uh, very interesting concept for the time. Fairly unusual. Um, soon it would not be unusual. <laughs> uh, I believe the year after this is when David Bowie put out Low, which is when the 80s really started, the sounds started being out there, ready for somebody to take them and turn it into the 80s. And I think this was kind of an early harbinger of the 80s as well. Anyway, um, just thought it would be nice to send him off properly. Uh, rest in peace, Gary Wright. Um, by the way, his, uh, his cause of death was Lewy body dementia and um, Parkinson's. 
over a period of years. Anyway, we thought we'd give our props to Gary and uh, also let people know who maybe weren't familiar with what he did. Uh, it's, it's good to know about these tracks <laughs> and about this history. All right. Well, with that, take care, folks.